Hey guys, I'm Dov, and today I'm back with more Total War Warhammer 2 online action. We're here once again with Techless and the High Elves, going to be taking on the Lizardmen. This is game two from my best of five with Loremaster of Sotek. So let's go ahead and take a look at the army compositions. I've got Techless here, Net of Amantok, and Feebling Foe, and Regrowth for his spells. Uh, for that pin in place, the uh, combat stat debuff, and the healing. We've also got Scroll of Hoeth to cast on an enemy caster. Uh, Bound Fiery Convocation and the Potion of Troy for that healing. We've got two nobles on horses to protect Teclis. They've got anti-large armor piercing, very mobile, overall very good e units. We've also got the one Eagle Claw Bolt Thrower ranked up to rank 4 <clears throat> to give him a better refire rate. You guys, I'll have to excuse me, I'm still a little bit sick um, recording these, so do apologize if my voice sounds a little bit off or if I have to clear my throat throughout the replay, but uh, hopefully we'll get through it here. We've got a front line of four units of spearmen with three units of archers for maximum dino killing power. We've also got three units of dragon princes, one there and two emerging from the forest now. These are to uh, deal with any lizardmen infantry essentially, and then once it comes down to the dinos, we'll just cycle them to death. <clears throat> That's it for my build, so let's go ahead and take a look at Loremaster of Sotek. Now, I had prepared for dinos. I mean, obviously, you're fighting lizardmen. You prepare for dinos. And so, Sotek, of course, has brought an infantry-heavy build <laughs> to uh, directly counter what I've got here. So, he's got one, two, three, four units of... Uh, or, sorry, three units of Source Warriors, three units of Temple Guard, two Skink Javelins with a Skink Skirmisher in the center... Looks like uh, we've got the Skink Priest, Lore of Heavens, up in the air. A Skink Chief up on his Pterodon as well. And over here in the forest, we've got uh, one unit of Skink Skirmishers and two Pterodon Riders. So let's go ahead and kick the battle into full gear and watch what happens. <clears throat> so right off the bat, I can see my, I've got my work cord cut out for me. He's going to be able to collapse my front line very effectively, so I've got to get some early work done with these Dragon Princes. To that effect, we're going to charge straight in on this uh, this unit of Saurus here. So we'll watch as these guys get an excellent charge in here, doing some really nice damage. So Tech immediately drops that uh, Harmonic Convergence on these guys. Buffing up their combat stats, 54 melee attack and 61 melee defense means they'll pretty much trade with the Dragon Princes. I'm gonna, trying to pull through to get on those Skinks and bring my other units, uh, my other unit of Dragon Princes around, and as a result, they don't get that great of a charge. Meanwhile, on the other side, <clears throat> this unit uh, had an attack order on these Skinks, but very well played by Loremaster Sotek, just hurling those javelins in, and these Temple Guard are gonna get a hold of quite a few of them and just do a ton of damage. Source all. Old Blood also comes in here and, and interrupts their move order, meaning that they are going to get caught up and killed by these Temple Guard here. So very well played. You can see across the line here, Saurus getting involved. This one's taking quite a bit of ammo, and uh, we're starting to uh, focus fire on some of these Pterodon Riders and so on. Uh, <clears throat> bringing in a rear charge all across the line here, a little bit of Alexander Elf action. This unit of Saurus is going to get crushed, but this other unit charged into Temple Guard, and once those Temple Guard turn around and start to attack the Dragon Princes, they're going to do some major damage to them. So I need to pull these guys out ASAP. I've already left them in too long. I need to just counter charge on those Saurus, or, you know, get up and out of here as quickly as possible. That being said, you know, uh, Bolt Thrower is still online, plugging away, especially because its refire rate is buffed. It fires much, much faster. We're able to do a lot of damage, immediately focus firing on the Skink Priest, the Lord of Heavens, who has flown over my line here. Uh, Teclas taking a little bit of damage there. Cube of Darkness looks like it's uh, interrupting his power recharge rate. Unfortunately, I'm not going to get to drop my little fancy scroll there, so a little bit of wasted spend, but at the end of the day, you know, it's alright. This unit of Dragon Princes, though, you can see, uh, tried to charge in on these Temple Guard, but it's just getting, dra it's just getting dragged down. Meanwhile, this other unit of uh, Dragon Princes and this unit of Spearmen here that were able to beat that one Saurus, Got into the back line, going to be riding down some of these Skink Skirmishers and Skink Javelins. I mean, obviously Dragon Princes will cr crush these guys pretty effectively. I'm trying to get my paw my Noble's Paws on this Source Old Blood, if at all possible. Obviously, they'll do a lot of damage to him with their anti-large armor piercing. The two of them together are more than a match for him, um, I would think. Uh, we'll see, but uh, also pulling away these Temple Guards so they're not involved in this mainline engagement while we try and double-team this unit of Temple Guard here. I mean, the Spearmen, they don't... They, they're not going to be able to get through the Temple Guard's uh, elite, you know, defense and armor and everything, but at the same time, they themselves have very good melee defense. The Temple Guard don't have the best melee attack in the world, so they will uh, be able to hold for some time there. We've got uh, <coughs> old Saurus Oldblood here with the uh, 
enfeebling foe and got the two nobles on him. We've also netted those temple guard to keep them from getting involved in this fight here. He is taking a lot of damage. Unfortunately, he is going to retreat back to those temple guard. I had a kind of a choice there. I honestly probably should have overcasted it to see if I could get both of them in one net. I'm not sure if they were close enough. I think they might have been a little bit too far away, but uh, I didn't. I didn't check to see. Um, but I had a choice to net either two of those, and either one would have been good. But um, over here, you can see in this pocket, <clears throat> these spearmen have got a good surround on these temple guard, but they're holding very, very well. We've also got some skink cohorts in here, kind of in a, another surround. So these uh, spearmen are caught between temple guard and skinks, and they are having a bad time. But here come the dragon princes, going to get a des devastating charge in here, just sending those poor little skinks flying. Uh, they're definitely going to do a lot of shock damage against a light unit like that. Regrouping the uh, nobles with Teclis here. Trying to get a hold of the Source Old Blood if at all possible. But he is still by these uh, Temple Guard here. So we're going to pull away <coughs> with the Dragon Princes. I need the, to keep these guys alive as long as possible. But uh, Source Old Blood a little bit out of, out of position here. I honestly probably should have just sprung in with those nobles. But uh, we are going to get a nice charge. <coughs> Uh, honestly, what I should have done right here is uh, just charge in with the Dragon Princes on the source and then see if I could maybe sweep around and get in on the Old Blood with the Nobles. But alas, the opportunity has passed at this point. A lot of my archers in the back line are being inundated. We've been able to deal with the Pterodons fairly effectively with the uh, Bolt Thrower and the Archers. Fortunately, at this point, my archers are kind of getting shut down by Skink Skirmishers, and the front line is completely gone. So we've pretty much just got Teclis and these Nobles fighting here. We're going to get a nice charge on these Saurus Warriors, just send them to the hills. Um... <coughs> And yeah, at this point, uh, it's it's still pretty close. You know, balance of power is definitely uh, in my favor here a little bit. Keep in mind that I am the red team here. So the balance of power shows in my favor a little bit here. But th that's mostly just because Teclis is still alive. Uh, this unit of Dragon Prince is, is going to have a really hard time dealing with all these uh, Saurus here. A little bit of a miss aim here. I'm going to get down this arc. Whereas if I had gone down this way, it actually would have hit uh, both of those units of Temple Guard. So fortunate miss there with that the fiery convocation but I honestly feel like they need to either speed up the cast time or or just speed up the animation the fiery convocation that animation takes way too long to go off considering it has a really long cast time but uh, we're gonna pop a regrowth here to keep these dragon princes fighting they've just picked up their first XP chevron 184 kills and uh, they are being healed, but they will still take a lot of damage from those Temple Guards, so don't want to stay in for too long. You can see them already dropping a uh, model or two there. But uh, yeah, the Noble and, and Teclis unfortunately getting tangled up in here. The two Nobles, I had meant to kind of fix these guys in place and get then get Teclis out of there. Fortunately, the window is fast closing around Teclis. You can see these Temple Guard are starting to uh, surround him. And Temple Guard have heavy enough mass that there's no way Teclis is going to be able to pull out of this situation. So although I do have my nobles fighting the source old blood here who's been able to heal up a little bit from their previous encounter, uh, it's not going to quite be enough here in the late game engagement. I do pop that enfeebling foe on him, but unfortunately we're going to get screened out by those temple guard. And again, they just have such heavy mass that these high elf nobles can't push through. We get a nice charge with the, with the dragon princes once again, going to be doing a ton of damage to these uh, temple guard. They're getting super low at this point, honestly, but we just can't finish off the source old blood and he shatters Teclis. So with Teclis shattered, you can see the balance of powers finally turned in the uh, lizardmen's favor. So yeah. Rough, rough engagement there. We'll uh, soak up some cinematic action as the uh, High Elves make their final stand here. These nobles uh, aren't going to stand up for too long, honestly, against these uh, Temple Guard here. They're way more than a match for a couple nobles on horses. So it is going to be a victory for the Lizardmen and a loss for me. So a very well played to Lore Master of Sotek. Let's go ahead and take a look at the end screen there. Uh, yeah, very well played Loremaster Sotek, uh, keeping that source Old Blood alive, despite me catching him out a couple times, you know, that's kind of uh, one of the great things about the Lizardman is, uh, number one, he was able to just stay in the fight, uh, keep his leadership together, and not completely lose his health uh, to the point where he either died or routed, but more importantly, he was able to pick up uh, that second, and I don't know, actually, he might have got one or two charges of old, uh, uh, the cold-blooded uh, Sotek, if you're watching this, you can let me know down below um, on the uh, <clears throat> on the source Old Blood himself. But uh, the main uh, tale of the tape here is obviously the Temple Guard just cleaning up that front line, no problem. Cleaning up two of the units of Dragon Princes relatively easily. You can see for my army, one of the units of Dragon Princes definitely paid off. The other two did not, unfortunately. So uh, 
if I had gotten these guys, uh, you know, I took some pretty unfavorable engagements early on. Even rear charging uh, the Temple Guard was a little bit of a mistake. If I had focused on the Soros Warriors and then cleaning up the Skinks and just kind of leave these Temple Guard until the late game, I think it would have worked out a little bit better for me. Uh, we were able to clean up the Pterodons uh, relatively effectively with the the archers and the uh, eagle claw bolt thrower unfortunately didn't have any dinos to shoot at so it was uh, stuck shooting pterodons the whole time but it did do some nice work at the end of the day uh, overall though just uh, those temple guard man they are very good elite tier halberds people underestimate them sometimes but uh, you know the lizardmen they, they're not just one trick you know you don't you, it's not just dino builds and that's something you got to remember they can bring very good infantry and skirmishers and uh, you know still still definitely take you to pound town so very well played to Lore Master of Sotek. Hope you guys enjoyed watching this battle. If you like this kind of content, like and subscribe. I'm keeping it coming with more Total War Warhammer 2 content every single day. So stay tuned for more and we'll see you next time.